Welcome back, you mad geriatric modelers. I say that because I noticed that my YouTube videos on my camel, the Demoiselle, and the Spirit of St. Louis, the age group is between 55 and 64. I myself, I'm 60. So, yeah, we're a geriatric modeling group. Anyway, this is the instrument panel and part two of the Spirit of St. Louis, the parts that I made for the display model that is at the Triple Tree Aerodrome Visitor Center. So we're going to make, I'm going to show you how I made this instrument panel right in front of you. Okay, this on the left is a picture of the completed instrument panel right next to a photograph of the, the actual instrument panel from the Spirit of St. Louis. Okay, these parts of the instrument panel I uh, engraved on my mill. Now, the on the very left, looks like a ruler. Uh, you notice that the top says rich and the bottom says lean. This is where Charles Lindbergh would set the carburetor to as lean a setting as possible to get the fuel mileage that he could get. Now, in the middle is the little magneto switch. I had to make two of those because the first one I made, I thought the bezel on top said uh, Bendix, but it didn't. After further re research, it said Scintilla. So I had to make a second one, and this one is correct. On the right is his turn and bank indicator. Now, this is two pieces of plastic, a very thin piece of black on top of a piece of white so that when it engraved, the white showed through. And this is just the little switch handle that you can see on the left hand. If I mean, that is a tiny little handle. And of course, I programmed it in Fusion 360 and cut it out on my CNC mill. And then there it is mounted on the right to the correct scintilla faceplate. <laughs> Engraving the fuel selector switch, or excuse me, the magneto switch. Now this is the instrument panel blank that I used uh, my again my CNC mill to cut out the locations correctly, as per the original Spirit of St. Louis. Now there's two other replicas of this same aircraft out there, and the instrument panels are a little bit different, but I happen to have gotten a hold of a correct blueprint of the, the original Spirit of St. Louis and was able to scale it down and cut the bezels out when the correct location. On the right hand side, it shows the cage to the turn and bank indicator. It was soldered up at a brass rod. Okay, here's a close up of, of course, the magneto switch, but the, the tachometer that, uh, or was it, the, whatever that is, um, I just wanted to point out that these instruments I printed out from the photo of the original panel and then implemented them into this one. So I, some of them may not look the greatest, but I want to point out the bezels on this and the next two pictures. You see where they're chipped. These bezels were made out of aluminum and painted with water-based paint. So as I worked with them, the paint chipped off and made them look like they were worn. Okay, this is in the top center of the panel. You can see on the left is his compass, one of two compasses he used. And then on the right is his altimeter. Again, the one on the, the, one on the left is a plastic bezel because it, on the original plane, didn't show much use or wear. Now the one on the right, it showed wear, so I cut that one out of aluminum. Okay, here's his airspeed indicator on the right-hand side of the panel, along with his stopwatch. Uh, the stopwatch was very important, and as a matter of fact, on this particular model, I ended up buying a used watch at uh, the, the dollar store or whatever, and I used the little twist knob down here at the bottom and to add some realism, and I think it worked out very well. Okay, here you see his compass headings and times that he was supposed to check. That's why the stopwatch on the left. Um, before he put this notation up there on his compass headings, there was a 
tall uh, sight glass that was mounted there. And that was used to figure out how much fuel he was burning. So on the flight across the Atlantic, the, the sight glass was removed and his compass headings were added. This actual page right here, again, came from a photograph from the original uh, Spirit of St. Louis. Okay, these are the switches that were used to turn the instrument panel lights on and off that were positioned at the top of the panel. Uh, they were just a couple tiny little screws put on a little piece of aluminum, like uh, aluminum foil that was creased and glued to the front of the panel. And here the, are the uh, two instrument panel lights. The little uh, thing you see sticking off to the side was a shield that you could turn that and you could dim the light on the panel. On the very left shows the two blanks that I turned on my lathe to make those lights. Okay, now we're moving on to the parts of the earth inductor compass. This is the bezel that was created on my CNC mill, and I believe the next little clip is a video showing it being cut. Hey, Tyler, we're cutting your instrument bezel for that compass. Thought you'd like to see how it's done. I've got this little bitty mill that runs off of my computer right here. I can design whatever I want and then just cut it out. I mean, it's not just cut it out. It takes a long time to learn the software, but, you know, I am a, an engineer. <laughs> okay, this is the earth inductor compass assembly. Now, this is typical of all of the instruments on this panel. You had the bezel that had a step on the backside that the glass mounted up against. Then you had a strip of black paper that was wound up inside to give some space between the, the face of the instrument and the glass. And then to back it up was a piece of plastic. So that paper uh, face that you see on that compass was glued to the plastic and put in the back. Okay, here you see the earth inductor compass. Now on the left, it shows the blank bezel sitting over a photograph, again, a, a true photograph from the Spirit of St. Louis. So I cut that bezel off of that photograph and used it for the compass. On the right, you see the completed compass. Now that little strip of paper between the glass on the front and the face of the instrument gives it depth. And here you see the earth inductor generator mounted on the aircraft at the visitor center. I'm sorry, I forgot to take pictures of how I constructed it, but I will explain. The bottom part was a big chunk of plastic that I turned to my lathe. The tube running up, I believe was some automotive brake line tubing with a couple ball bearings in it. The top was a piece of brass stock that I turned into a round shape and put on a shaft that went through the bearings. Uh, the little spoons was brass sheet that I formed by using a rounded punch into a rounded uh, anvil. So as I punched the sheet, I, I got a little round piece out of it. And that was all soldered together. Then I sent it to Tyler, sent all of this to Tyler, and he mounted it in the plane. And here's the finished picture of the instrument panel installed in the plane that Tyler was gracious enough to send me. I want to point out that the very top of the panel, left of the altimeter, you can see some chalk marks up there. And those are chalk marks uh, showing how much fuel he's used from each tank. If you look at that fuel manifold, that guy had to have really kind of kept an eye on the fuel tanks because each valve down there draws from a, a different source. So I hope you like this. Uh, please like and subscribe, and uh, this will complete the Spirit of St. Louis parts build.